Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you for coming again to another session of the 99 Names of Allah. Uh, today we are going to be uh, covering the uh, the names of al baith Al-Shaheed, and Al-Haq. We are going through the uh, 50th name. Um, so we're over halfway through, and you may be wondering uh, what what's the deal? We're on the 17th day, but we're going through 99 names, and now we're 50% of the way through. Uh, so at, in the last 10 days of Ramadan, inshallah, we'll be covering four names each uh, a day. And so uh, we'll be we'll be you know going through those. But uh, each day we've been covering three. And then the last uh, 10 days we'll be doing four. So we'll make up the difference there. But uh, last time we had covered Al-Hakim, Al-Wadud, and Al-Majid. These names uh, carried the connotation of the all-wise, the all-loving and the glorious, the most glorious. And so uh, one, one thing that we lift up with these names, with the names of the all wise, with the name of the all loving is that wisdom, this transcendent wisdom comes from uh, a, 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 a perspective of and a point of humility. And this transcendent wisdom that we, that we have been not only imbued with, but one that our creator has and is the source of then allows us to become loving, then allows us to become most loving, and it helps facilitate that. And that love, as we're in the second 10 days of Ramadan, the second 10 days were those that the Prophet, peace be upon him, marked as the days of forgiveness, marked as the days uh, in which forgiveness was abundant. And so when we become forgiving, when we become loving, we are more open to forgiveness and vice versa. So uh, and at the end, we recognize Allah is the most glorious, the Majid, and above all this, and, and deserving of so much more uh, than this, but uh, inspiring and cultivating these, these qualities within us. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and we'll jump into the Asma'il Husna for today, the recitation of the 99 names. Uh, and to do so, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And as always, as you are comfortable, as you are feeling the space, and as you are wanting to get in centered with these names, feel free to do whatever you need to do to center yourself in the presence of these names. Bismillah, let us begin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Who Allah, who la ilaha illa hu al Rahman al Rahim, al Malik al Qudus al Salam, al Mu'min al Muhaymin al Aziz al Jabbar, al Mutakabir al Khaliq al Bari, al Musawir al Ghafar, al Qahar al Wahab al Razak, al Fatah al Alim. القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير الهكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الهليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الهفيذ المقيت الحسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواصع الحكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق الوقيل القوي المتين الوالي الهميد المحسي مبدي المعيد المهي المميت الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقم العفو الرؤوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام 
المقسط الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار النافع النور الهادي البديع الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور So with these names we begin, inshallah, with our three names for today, as mentioned, Al-Ba'ith, Al-Shaheed, and Al-Haq, uh, the ones that you had seen in these slides. But also these names uh, mark the halfway point for us as we cover on our way to 99 names. We cross that threshold of 49, 50, and uh, we're, we're going, I think, here into 50, 51. So Bismillah. Starting with Al-Ba'ith. Al-Ba'ith is the awakener, translated as the awakener, the resurrector, the one who causes, the one who releases, uh, the one who raises the dead. So powerful language around here, around life, death, and uh, reinvigoration and resurrection. And so the root meanings of Ba'ith come from the or connotate to send, to send out, to dispatch, to forward, to call forth, to awaken, to revive, to resurrect, uh, to resuscitate, to raise the dead. So it has these, these wide varieties of, of, of meanings that are attributed to it as well. So you have in Al-Ba'ith, the one who awakens in us, not just the literal awakener of the humans on the day of judgment or uh, you know beforehand, and waking them up or resurrecting them, but you have Al-Ba'ith operating within this world as well, within this time uh, space of our life, within ourselves. So we mentioned that Allah has the attributes and all of these attributes operate on all holistic levels. In a sense, they operate on the outer, they operate on the inner, and they operate holistically in the spiritual and the metaphysical ways. So there's so much more to it than just translating it as one thing, because as you can see with the root meanings, there's so many things that can be derived from this. So Al-Ba'ith awakens in us that desire to free ourselves from the control of our impulses and to turn away from those lower moods, the listlessness, and uh, just reduce those things which might hold us down. It awakens in us that desire to become better. So you can see how this, this name transcends the corporeal to literally awakening us uh, to going to a deeper thing, to a spiritual awakening. And it gives us qualities of perseverance. It gives us qualities of steadfastness, but also hope. Al-Ba'ith helps us become free from those barriers, which may be holding down. A metaphor was given that how uh, Al-Ba'ith raises the dead, raises the dead from their graves. Similarly, the grave of this life is what Al-Ba'ith helps us raise ourselves from, that we're, we've been, we've covered ourselves in our life, our work, all these different things are just piling on top of us. And so we are having a resurrection in this life, as well as the one in the one to come. But the one in this life is marked by a spiritual resurrection, a resurrection of finding what those true values were uh, that we were imbued with, those divine sparks. So Al-Ba'ith helps us open that path. It helps open that path as well as open that path to not only our inner humanity and our true humanity, but again, unveiling and gradually showing us the connection we have to the divine. And so each of us has these set or a set of virtues or a virtue. We talked about how Allah created the, uh, the, the world and the creation in this, uh, in, these in this divine kind of tapestry. And so each of us has these divine sparks from which we were created, these 99 names we were going through. And so uh, Allah allows us through Al-Ba'ith to help us discover, help us revive and help us resuscitate and awaken these inner virtues and then helps develop them as well. Not just saying, hey, you've got these great, you're on your own, but to help identify what is this and what is special about it. And so the Ba'ith, as I mentioned, is, those, is that awakener of the divine qualities, but also not just the metaphorical resurrector, but Al-Ba'ith is understood as the literal resurrector. So we, we're all very, mostly, of, most of us are very familiar with that concept of resurrection, that concept of being raised after death, being raised in the afterlife before the day, or after the, on the day of judgment being raised. And so we, we have this, this, this concept that's there, but what's really 
crucial is that th this is not it's not limited to one of these only that it's 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 transcendent and it covers both what's in this life and in the next and so al baith in our spiritual sense it gives us that confidence that we need to uh we 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 need to really uh not just not just take advantage of the time and limited space that we've been given, but we also need to be patient with that because we need to be recognizing that we have these divine sparks. They, they probably can't all just emerge at once. It's a process. And al Ba'ith reminds us that certain things will come at their due time. They, they Each thing has their fixed time and they will activate accordingly. But we want to be in that mindset to where we have clean and open and polished and soft hearts to where we can receive these awakenings as they come. And so when, when, this, when we look at this name, it gives us that strength to, to make sure that we are awake or in, in another sense, as, as we know today, stay woke. So you stay awake and cheerful without giving into the, the desire to just like disconnect from Allah or to disconnect and just to, just to like, you know, leave, leave those things on the side. We, we stay woke with Allah. We stay woke with the faith. We stay woke with our hearts because we then are receptive to those changes that are to come. And so when, when we talk about the spiritual resurrection, the spiritual resurrection comes from that purification of the heart and the mind. We've talked about how so many of the names of Allah, if not all of them up to this point, in some way, shape, or form, operate in a way that they reduce the ego, they abase the ego, they take it down, uh, but they also help polish the heart. They help clean the heart. And so we want to approach the divine. We want to be resurrected spiritually as even uh, better and more transformed beings, as more better and transformed creation. Uh, but we can only do that when we work on our heart first, when we work on taking out the impurities and work on cleansing the heart. And so in the Quran, life is associated with knowledge, death is with ignorance. So you see the, the, the spiritual and the metaphor behind that. So we, we want to step out of that, as we mentioned, the grave, the grave that we've dug ourselves in, the grave that society has maybe put us in. Some of us didn't choose to go in there. Some of us were put in there uh, six feet deep. And on, on top of that, it's just different things of just barriers. Sometimes it may just be our own ignorance whatever it might be. It's something that's holding us back. It's something that's keeping us disconnected from Allah. It's keeping us in darkness. And so we want to get out of that grave with our greatest virtues, in sense, our liveliness, our knowledge, consciousness, our connection, our creative power, whatever it may be, this name helps us get out of that grave, helps us awaken and say, no, hey, I've got to, I've got to move on to something better than this. And this name helps us see those things, see things in a wider context, and then be renewed. We see the connection, we see the divine everywhere, and we're prompted to resurrect, to awake. And last thing I'll conclude with this name, inshallah, is this name begs the questions, uh, as was mentioned in our in our text here, div divine names. The, the questions that this name begs are, how did you use your life? How did you spend your youth? How did you spend your time? How did you earn your wealth and how did you spend it? Questions like these are, uh, are begged by this name because it's reflective and it, it causes you to say, hey, I, I need to awaken. I need to get to something better, but what have I been doing up to this point? So we, we, we associate resurrection, not just with the bodily resurrection that would that is to come, but a resurrection in this life as well of reactivating our true call and purpose. So with that being said, we move on to a shaheed A shaheed is the witness, the one who perceives the observer. And in this name, Allah acts as a witness to the creation as well as to Allah's own existence and the operation that is created by Allah in, in, in the, in, in, within creation, but also just the sheer existence. And this act of witnessing, just witnessing in general nourishes conscious, our conscience. It nourishes our consciousness. It nourishes our awareness and it helps elevate them to a sphere of higher, uh, higher strata of a, of a very, of a very high sphere um, of understanding and being. And so we see that witnessing not only is just something us looking at something, but to witness carries along a lot of other meanings with it as well. The, the root meaning of this word brings about witnessing, but also to experience something personally, to see something, to perceive something, to present, to attend, 
to give, to give evidence, to testify, to observe. So you see, there's so many things that come about when we think about witnessing may not just be bystanders on the road or may not be just someone giving testimony in court. It's a holistic sense of those elements that, that comprise that. And so witnessing is very much an intentional practice and something that requires presence, but something that helps nourish things like consciousness, nourish things like awareness and mindfulness. And so everything in the world, as we've mentioned, every creation that exists in the world, outside the world, the celestial beings, whatever, the celestial bodies, all that stuff in the, in the universe, all these things bear witness to Allah's existence, as well as bearing the signature of Allah at these different names that were created. And Allah in a shaheed meets us in our thoughts, meets us in our feelings, meets us in our bodies, meets us in our dreams and all that is around us and helps, you know, create these different signs in the world for us. A shaheed transforms us into witnesses and makes us aware of the divine presence. So everything around us becomes a symbol or a sign of Allah. And so whatever is present within your heart is your shaheed, your witness. We, we, we know that uh, your personal witness, we, we, we all put on a good uh, face. We have our own bravados. We do our own different thing. We, we cover ourselves. But at heart, we know how we really are. If we're going through a nine to five job, if we're going through our, our lives or in our relationships, and we know that this isn't something that is benefiting us, but we're just in it for being in it, we our heart knows that. So our heart is a witness. And oftentimes that heart can get uh, darkened, that heart can get uh, hardened, that heart can get separated based on how inauthentically we live our lives. But at the core, our heart still bears witness to exactly what we're doing. And so what we, what we want to do in this, in the sense that when we inject love, when we inject love, love brings that distant beauty of the divine presence, that, that separation and helps, uh, helps uh, repair that separation, helps bring it closer, and our heart becomes more pure. Our heart becomes not just the witness that's a bystander, our heart becomes an agent that says no, like, you know, that says no, you're not going to do this, or hey, we, there's more to the story than just us being a silent observer. So our heart really begins to take over and helps us see uh, ourselves in terms of consciousness, in terms of our uh, perception, and in terms of our awareness. So when we look at the name of Ash-Shahid, when we look at the name of Ash-Shahid, it removes forgetfulness as well from our thoughts and our heart, and it reminds us where we come from, where we came from, and the tracks of that journey. So when we talk about how these names, uh, this name in specific reminds us of the divine, reminds us of Allah's existence in the creation, we also see the tracks of how do we got how we got to where we are. And as I mentioned, this this does have the root meanings of so many things beyond just witnessing. So we compile all those and get a really rich name that goes beyond any one word. And so this name really urges us to walk. It urges us to walk through traps of external knowledge and to reach that internal knowledge to get past the outer levels of things and to when we see that hey we just witnessed something we just saw something not just what did you see but what did you see like what was there beyond that if i'm give, detailing to you that i saw somebody running across the street i could just say that i saw somebody running across the street but why were they running what was behind the scene what was going on in the scene what was there anything else going on so you you have a a, a more holistic sense there and so this name really urges us to improve ourselves in that sense, to really deepen our knowledge, to really deepen our perception. And so we bear witness with this name. We bear witness not just to a, a, the outer, but also to the inner. And as shahid points to the omnipresence, as I mentioned, of the divine and to seeing, perceiving, and observing all things that happen in the creation and all things that happen with that knowledge. And so as we close out with this name, as we close out with this name and go to Al-Haqq, we know that this name, Ash-Shahid, cultivates that understanding, cultivates that knowledge, and brings qualities of mindfulness and bearing witness, and also then prevents us. When you have these things, it prevents you from going down a path that may inc incorporate uh, inherent shame, may incorporate inherent uh, you know, low thoughts or just a lower being. It, it helps heighten your sense of mindfulness to where we don't we, we avoid descending down these paths here not that we might not slip not that we might not you know trip up here and there but it helps us be aware that hey we did trip up 
And so this, uh, this name really opens up our heart to see all the things that are connected. We see the divine everywhere. And when we understand this quality, we truly testify to the truth and to Allah's omnipresence. And when we say to the truth, we then talk about Al-Haq. So Al-Haq is the name that uh, means the truth, the true reality, the reality, the, re the real one, the true one, all these names, just the absolute certain. And so truthfulness is from this from this attribute. As we mentioned, the names of Al-Hakim, Al-Wadud, the, the most wise, the most loving, these attributes of wisdom and lovingness come from this name. Just like that, truthfulness emanates from uh, Al-Haq. And so Al-Haq is the one to whom the all of the divine names can be ascribed because it's just it's 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 a four letter arabic word but it's also just a five letter word in english it's just the truth it's it's just that that is the truth and so the root of this name comes uh, with the connotations and the meanings of to be true to be confirmed to be correct to be necessary to be obligatory to recognize to uh, have fact to have true nature, have true essence, correction, uh, be, being sound and being absolutely correct. And so we see that there's just, there's no ifs and buts about it. This is a certainty that at the least, these other other things might have some kind of like, oh, does it exist? Does it not? Does this, this, this? But this is the absolute one truth. And so Al-Haq is reality. Al-Haq is truth. Al-Haq is absolute in the imminence and the transcendence of Allah. This truth brings about a liberation. And so we be truthful in our speech. We be truthful in our actions and we seek truth in every situation and manner, even if it's against ourselves. When we see how witnessing is tied to this, it, witnessing under, when we understand witnessing, we truly then testify to the truth. We are absolute witnesses. So when we think about the Shahada, when we think about the de declaration of faith that I testified that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. And so, and Muhammad is his messenger. We, we testify, but we accept this as a truth. So one comes after the other. And so this truth brings about a liberation. It brings about not just that awakening, but it brings about uh, freeing ourselves from the shackles. And we know that what we're being held down by, that this isn't true. This isn't what's real. What's real is that divine. What's real is the creator. So we, we remove these shackles from ourselves and we see what that truth is and we bring about that liberation. So as I mentioned, we not only want to be truthful in our speech and our actions, but we want to be true to ourselves. We want to be true to ourselves because when we're not true to ourselves, we create a bigger disconnection between us and Allah. And when we know ourselves, we know Allah. And when we really know ourselves, we come to know Allah. And so that, that's, what, that's what it's important to be truthful to ourselves. And uh, for the Sufis, truth is a synonym of Allah. Truth is there just like Al-Haq, it is a synonym. And that truth is, is there's nothing else but the truth. And so as we close out with Al-Haq, as we close out with this name, it's it's important that we see the connection here. We see the connection between the name of al baith We see the name of the connection between al shahid and we see the connection of the name of Al-Haq. al baith being again the one that awakens us. Let's take not just for the resurrection in the post uh, in the in the afterlife, but the resurrection that can happen here. So we're awakened to our senses. We're awakened to seeing what all is really around us. But then as we're awakened, our mind is starting to see, starting to perceive. We begin to witness. We begin to see and not just witness in terms of looking at things but we see something we see a plant we see a tree we see a person we see whatever it might be and we start to perceive what is behind all that what is what is the deeper realm of that and we get to know through that that there there is something more that's there and as we understand this quality as i mentioned we testify to the truth we're like no this is exactly what i am looking at and it's coming from a sincere point because we've opened our heart to it and then with that we recognize the truth that is allah and that there's nothing else but Allah. But in that, we recognize the truth in ourselves. We recognize the being necessary to be true to ourselves so that we can, in fact, see the truth around us. So we want to be upholders of truth. We want to bear truth in all that we do, in our actions, in our speech, in our thoughts, because that is what facilitates making a pure heart. Not And the opposite is what keeps that separation, keeps that separation, and keeps that darkness uh, that, that our heart might be locked in. 
So with that, we, we will inshallah conclude and we will do our dhikr and uh, then we will uh, close out. So inshallah, let us go ahead and begin with the uh, dhikr for today. And when we open up the dhikr, as I mentioned, we open up with the, the beginning of the uh, testimony of faith, the declaration of faith, la ilaha illallah, just stating that there is none other of, of worship, worthy of worship, except Allah, la ilaha illallah. And so in this, we, we, find, we find some truth. We start out with a statement of truth, and we center ourselves with the truth, and then we descend here into, and we go into these next a uh, few names that are there, but we start out lifting that up, that that's the baseline, and we go to these other names. So inshallah, let us begin here. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al ba'ith, 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 al ba'ith. Al-Ba'ith, 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 Al-Ba'ith. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al-Shaheed, 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 Al-Shaheed. Al-Shaheed, 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 Al-Shaheed. Ya Shaheed, 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 Ya Shaheed. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al-Haqq, 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 Al-Haqq. Al-Haqq, 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 Al-Haqq. Ya haku, 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 ya haku. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. So brothers and sisters, go out, inshallah, and we, we take these names and we stay woke. We stay woke to Allah. We stay woke to the world around us because when we stay woke to the world that's around us, to Allah, we bear witness. And when we bear witness, we not only see something, we incorporate something and we in internalize it and we process it and we see the truth for what it is. And when we see the truth, we accept that there is no other truth but Allah. And we see that how we operate in this creation, how we operate in the world around us is only from a modus of truth. So inshallah, let us take that. And I uh, pray to see you tomorrow, inshallah. And I hope this session was of benefit. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.